So I chose the subjects that people are like, ugh, I don't like them in school, but you need them. So what's your client Thank you list? for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, nice to have you. So today I have with me a very young in business <laughs> entrepreneur, but young in ages. So if you'd like to introduce yourself to our audience. Okay. Hi everyone. My name is Immaculate for Emma for sure. Uh, as I was telling Mojo, I am a business entrepreneur. I also am interested in property and property investment, which I do on the side. And I also run my own business called M's Tutor and Mentor. You can find us everywhere on social media. Okay. Oh, thank you very much for that. I like women who are multi-talented, you know, going into <laughs> so many different areas and not limiting themselves. No, that's great. Today, we're going to be talking about your tutoring business. So this is something you do alongside your full-time job. So if you can just introduce us to the business and what inspired you? M's Tutor and Mentor kind of came a few years ago because my background, I'm a scientist. My degree Ooh. was in pharmaceutical science. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm really everywhere. So I was doing a master's in pharmaceutical science. And then as I was growing up within my community, a lot of people were telling me, oh, you know, you're really, you would could do good to mentor other children. I'm Kenyan as well. Ooh. So, you know, the African background, it's like, oh, you, can you mentor my daughter? Can you do this? Uh, I'm thinking, I don't know how, but okay, that's a good <laughs> idea started realizing that I have some kind of like I can speak to audiences that's great because <laughs> that's also a skill within entrepreneurship that you find that you need a lot as well <laughs> see that I could do like hosting and I can attract an audience and I was like okay this is interesting so something which I believe is that you can't just keep your gifts to yourself you also have to share with others and especially if it's a community around you that you can also help the next generation to grow I decided to start this tutoring and mentoring and I just started doing just one person just to help them in science and maths, which is what I'm passionate about. How do you find clients or how did you start? So your first client, you got that. And how did you get more clients? What did you do? So really something that I really find useful with social media, that is something which I really try and harness a lot. If you go to our social media, M Tutor and Mentor on Facebook, Instagram, and um, we've really tried to capture it. As I was doing it on my own the first time, obviously, as a novice, you can play around with Canva and things like that. But sometimes you always have to get like a team of people behind you to kind of help you with the structuring and how it comes across. So I've kind of developed it as I went on. And I also have a great team of people behind me help me with my social media, how like what kind of ideas to come across. And also I do Instagram lives. So just people seeing that social media presence also helps them to realize that you're doing this and then you can also grow and get clients okay i love that about social media because you're on instagram you actually go live as well and then yeah. you also have a team so that's remind me asking how old you are because uh, it would be interesting oh i'm 27 years old <laughs> 27, oh, great so at that young age of 27 oh you remind me of ali abdal because he actually started like oh yes i think i've heard of that name because you've got a team so how big is your team how many people have you got supporting you really it's just me most of the time but i just have like one or two other people if i need them from time to time it's not a big team i'm not ali with the huge massive team if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed i reserve my comments you're smart enough to know that you can't do everything yourself yeah. and to know that if you need to grow you need to lean on others or use the expertise of others because of course something that you might take a whole day to do these guys can probably yeah. drop it in an hour or two and that just saves you time so we need to start putting value on our time yeah because i want to find out the business model so people are interested where do they go how do they sign up so the way i began to attract clients is really just through my community like spreading it back and telling them hey here i also developed a website later on so a okay. website wasn't the first thing i developed because as we know, like a website domains all have costs that as a small business owner, you can't always afford straight away. So things like utilizing Facebook, even though you said your generation don't use social media, I feel like Facebook is also undervalued sometimes because I do find a lot more older people see your page. So, yeah, so I developed a website later on and there you can find all my details. You can click on the WhatsApp and then we have more things that you can see. So that's how people can get in contact with okay. me. Okay. And um, yeah, I just wanted to point out as well that this is a lesson for those of you who are thinking of starting. You don't need to have all your docs lined up. You don't need to have everything. A website came about later on. So don't let not having a website stop you from starting your business now. It's often been said, start from where you are. It's a shame we didn't start from the beginning because I wanted to have <laughs> background because you then said you did science. 
at uni. Yes, so oh, I am oh. a graduate in pharmaceutical science. What do you teach the students then? What are your main subjects? So my main subjects are maths and science. I am a lover of maths, definitely love maths. I feel like you need that everywhere. So I chose the subjects that people are like, ugh, I don't like them in school, but you need them. So what's your client base like? About how many students do you have now? Comes in peaks and troughs. So sometimes oh, okay. it'll be like like five students or like it could be more or less. But because okay. it's still balancing is the main thing. <laughs> okay, you're doing well. I want to come to the delivery of it. So how do you deliver? Do you go to their houses? What does that look like? So yes, it depends on how they want. So I yeah. can either go to the houses if they're within the local vicinity or yeah. because I have other tutors who I sometimes get to do the subjects, they can do a Zoom session just okay. as we are now. Okay, yeah. that's an interesting part as well. So you don't actually deliver everything yourself. You also have yeah. teachers who support you. I hope people are listening and taking something away from mm -hmm. this because you've just talked about the fact that you don't need to be ready. Secondly, using people not only to help you with the back end stuff, but also to help with the delivery. Listening to you, what are some of the key skills that you think have been helpful in getting you to where you are now? I mean, helping you to get your business off the ground and, you know, talking to me about it. Yeah, I think one of the key skills, especially being like a younger entrepreneur rather than someone like you who's really experienced, I think one of the key skills is having that confidence just to be able to put yourself out there. Sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm not good enough. I don't know what I'm doing or in terms of like, oh, nobody will want it or even just like marketing your stuff every day. Sometimes you just have to be like, oh, no, actually, this is my bread and butter. This is what I want to do. So I need to put myself out there. So it's just that confidence. And then within that confidence comes also like being able to talk to different audiences and relaying your message. Mm -hmm. So the fact, the way that I'm speaking to you and then I can speak to a parent, I can speak to a child, being able to share the same message that I'm saying, but just in different ways. And another key skill is also just accepting a lot of rejections along the way. Or there's a few memes or a few things that I see online about sometimes your supporters are not necessarily the ones who are within your circle it could even be like a total stranger who supports you more than people around you even though they'll say oh i've seen you doing this okay you've seen me but have you inquired have you actually like come to me and asked me no okay all right and you have cheerleaders but even the ones cheerleading you are not always the ones ready to like take money out their own pockets say yeah let's do something but you know maybe that's not your audience and you have yeah. to know where your audience is yeah i think what you said is actually an interesting point because i've written a couple of books and in one of them i do talk about the power of networking and help people understand just as you've alluded to most of your clients are going to come from outside of your network don't expect mm -hmm. them to come within your network they might push you so other people see mm -hmm. you but they won't be your customers. So what does the future hold? What, what do you see? What's your vision? I have a big vision. So I, if you go on my website, or I'm trying to do more product type things. So actually, currently, I'm going to stand back. I have a hoodie. Oh, I'm wearing wow, I like that. Um, stand up again, mental. because that was too... That was too <laughs> oh, stand sorry. Up. Okay, so and that one. And mental. Okay, great. So we rebranded a year or two ago, just because okay. I wasn't happy with the initial branding. Okay. So I'm trying to do more products that you can also have alongside the tutoring okay. and mentoring. Okay. Your dream is to be on a high street? More online, because okay. I feel like with the current market, I feel like mm. online is the way that we're going to go. I'm not sure about high street, but maybe one day I might be like something like a Kumon. But for now, it's just to kind of stay online, get the clients and do more sessions like this. Okay, then you've done so well. So when did you start the business? 2016-ish. What? So you've been doing it for... That's I say this, years. but it's, it's on and off for those on years. It's not okay. consistently. Again, with the nine to five, and because I was in university oh, doing my okay. degree. Oh, because you're a new entrepreneur, are there any questions you might want to ask me? How do you are you able to like manage on a daily basis in terms of balancing everything? I'm happy you um, asked that question because my last book was actually on time management and productivity. Oh, wow. So yeah, so for me, it's all about planning ahead, having an idea about what it is you want to do, and I try not to do lists, so it's about projects. Mm -hmm. So just like you said, you'll be branding your t-shirt, your business or selling products. That to me is a project. And then you then break mm -hmm. it up rather than concentrating on a to-do list because a to-do list mm -hmm. might not move you forward. I prefer mm -hmm. to concentrate on the project. So right now I'm rebuilding my website. So that is a project that I can break down into smaller tasks, but I know once I've completed it, it's a project that's completed. So that's one thing. And then time management is a, as well. I think sometimes we overestimate what we can achieve yeah. in the short term. So it's about being reasonable 
and practical about what you can achieve and especially if you're do working by yourself so i think sometimes we put ourselves under pressure to do a lot and when we don't deliver we get frustrated and then we don't do it anymore we just forget about it it's about being consistent it's about having that resilience as well because of, you will face challenges the number of challenges I face on a daily basis. <laughs> but you have to be resolute to accept that it comes with the territory. There will be challenges, but you will get over them. But it's having a vision. Having a vision is important. In terms of time management, it's just about planning, getting up, deciding on how many hours you're going to work a day. And I tell people it's not about working eight to nine hours a day. To be honest, if you can get two hours productivity out of a day, you're well ahead of the pack. Mm -hmm. So it's not about working four, five, six, seven hours. Small and consistency is what brings the results. If you look around me here, I've got this whiteboard. So look, <laughs> oh, I wow. use a whiteboard. So that's painted onto the wall. And I use yeah. that to plan ahead. We all have 24 hours a day. And <laughs> some people produce great results. So it's all about planning. And also checking back, review, sit down and ask yourself those questions. So I don't know if that's... Yeah, no, that was very helpful. I'm going to look into doing projects now instead of lists, because I'm a list person. I'm like, okay. But now if I do projects, it makes sense. When I mentor people as well, I said, don't send me your to-do list. That's not going to help. Send yeah. the projects you're working on. So then at the end of three months, six months, we can go back and check that you've completed that. Yeah. Another thing I do is I like to eat my gremlins in the morning. So any tasks, mm -hmm. projects, I do them in the morning. and the afternoon, I might do admin and all of that. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, admin okay. in the morning. When I was really good now, I'm not as good as I used to be. I never even checked my phone or emails. Wow. In the yeah. There are many times I would go to lectures or go to a meeting and I'll be told that will be cancelled because I just feel that even though you might be picking up your phone to check something, it, it's a rabbit hole before you know it. Yeah. Yeah. An hour later, you're still on that phone. So I try not to pick up my phone first thing in the morning. Yeah. So oh, those are something. And we're <laughs> confronted with so much distraction. People's futures are being stolen, you know. It's true. The generation are very much <laughs> victims of we're not left out, trust me, we're not left out. Just that because we understand what it used to be before this, I think yeah. we have some kind of buffer. I'm not sure. Um, I have another question that I just okay. thought of, if that's okay. So in terms of obviously the way technology is moving with AI, how are you as a business person going to like, looking forward to implement that within your business? I already implement it. I love um, okay. new technologies, I already do. So as I do YouTube now, most of my thumbnails, my description, my hashtags, come from chat so i do wow. all, i just get, and then emails as well as well you need to understand that you need to be smart to use chat so it's not just yeah. about it's regurgitating whatever it is you've put in you need to be able to guide it on what you want so asking it questions so i could give it a prompt to write this email i want you to write this email to this person and i'll tell it ask me what questions are you going to ask me to ensure that that email meets what yeah. i want to do so it's a dialogue you have to ask it obviously not to produce the actual work was I write yeah. books as well. Anyway, the books I wrote were before chats anyway, so you can use it to brainstorm as well. So when it comes to marketing your business, scheduling content online, things like that, AI can help you. Because instead of yeah. sitting there and thinking about, oh, what? You can just tell it, listen, this is what I'm trying to do. So your business, I need to send out information, maybe video, a tweet, an Instagram post. What can I do? to help me get maybe 200, 300 subscribers. You leave it there and yeah. then you ask it. Ask me the questions that will help you to produce the content I want. So you need to mm -hmm. ask it. I don't know if you do that already. I started doing some AI stuff. I haven't really fully integrated yet. Oh, if I wanted to write a blog post about a video I'd put up, plugins that I can put on the video and it would just summarize the video for me so I can then use that information oh. on my website if I wanted to write a blog post. Mm -hmm. And also I can use that information to tell it, listen, I need to write a LinkedIn post, summarize this and give me some ideas. And it will give me the ideas. Of course, you'll always have to tweak what it comes out with, but at least it's a starting point. Yeah, you know, that's start true. From ground zero. Okay, I'm learning a lot. Thank you so much. So thank you very much for coming Immaculate and I wish you all the best with your business. Thank, thank you. Thank you guys for watching and please subscribe and like the video. I'll see you in my next video, guys. Thanks for watching.